How the United States bankrolled a German World War II officer's spy ring. As Hitler's Third Reich crumbled under the relentless pressure of the advancing Allies in May of 1945, Richard Galen, the head of the Nazi intelligence for the Eastern Front, saw the writing on the wall and grabbed his files. As the old saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. Galen had a trove of intelligence on the Soviets, which according to his 1972 memoir, The Service, he hid in still cases in Bavaria. Then, the former Nazi intelligence officer quickly surrendered to counterintelligence corps of the U.S. Army. He went on to broker a deal that said instead of being prosecuted for war crimes, he and a select group of his men would establish a secret intelligence service for the occupation forces and hand over the service files that they had on the Soviets. With the Soviet threat looming, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill purportedly wanted to continue on and push towards the Soviet Union. It became apparent that the Americans were wholly unprepared for this emerging menace and agreed to work with the Nazi in order to gain intelligence. So Galen did what he did best, spy. Given autonomous command by the U.S. occupation forces, Galen personally chose his German staff to set up what was known as the Galen Organization, or the ORG for short. According to the Institute for Policy Studies, Galen proceeded to enlist thousands of Gestapo, Wehrmacht, and SS veterans, even the vilest of the vile, the senior bureaucrats who ran the central administrative apparatus of the Holocaust were invited into the org, including Alois Brunner, Adolf Eichmann's chief deputy. Returning to West Germany under the U.S. Army's G2 intelligence branch in 1946, Galen and the org were soon transferred under the aegis of the CIA and bankrolled with millions of U.S. dollars. The org was primed for the onset of the Cold War in ways that the U.S. was not. It has been estimated that Galen and the org provided the CIA and the Pentagon with 70% of its intelligence on the USSR and Eastern Europe. Now that's impressive. 